Welcome back, family. This is a segment where I want to make sure that we help you take care of each other, take care of yourself, and of course, just know a little bit more about the things that are happening around us. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of you may have heard of Alzheimer's, also dementia. Do you know that the two are actually related? And dementia is the broader category, and Alzheimer's is just another type or form of dementia. So I'm not going to go into full details, but right now we want to wake you up in the nose. So let's see what's about to take place. Hey, good people. Good morning, family. Thank you again for being up this early with us. I want to, as we usually do, wake you up in the nose. And today I have a representative from the St. Lucia Alzheimer's and Dementia Association. Now it might sound like a mouthful. Maybe it might be new terms to some of us and to others, not that much. But we're all going to learn today because I have a very special lady here with us. So I'd like to introduce Regina Postvar. How are you today? Today. I'm well, I'm well, thank you. Great, thank and I'm very happy that you've taken time out because I know you have a very tight schedule. So I'm happy we could fit this in. That way we can help spread the awareness about Alzheimer's and dementia and at least we all can be more knowledgeable and understanding. So I think first of all, before we jump into that, if you could just let, let St. Lucia know who you are and your role with the association. Sure, my name is Regina Postvar. I'm the president of the St. Lucia Alzheimer's and Dementia Association, also known as SLADA, which is easier to remember. <laughs> so, there we go. Great. Now, with this, um, let's talk a little bit about what is Alzheimer's and what is dementia, because I've had an experience. Um, I have a grand aunt who passed away from Alzheimer's, and it was only at that point, having somebody so close to me, did I really realize how it affects not just the person, but also the people around. So let's start off by enlightening people as to what Alzheimer's is. Okay, well, dementia itself, um, or in itself, is really not a disease in itself. It's a collection of symptoms that affect a person's cognitive thinking. It affects their movement. It affects uh, different types. Also memory. Memory is a big one, but it involves a lot of things and Alzheimer's is actually the cause of those symptoms. So it's under an umbrella of dementia and um, things like, uh, let's see, Lewy bodies, Parkinson's disease, these are all neurodegenerative diseases and they eventually end up result in death. So they're, they're, it's cell death, so the brain cells die, unlike vascular dementia, which is also pro progressive um, as well, but it's a blood flow problem, so which which um, it makes a domino effect and everything, and so the, all of the disease, all of the dementia diseases do end up um, resulting in the same pattern, not in the same pattern, but the end result of Alzheimer's, which Alzheimer's has a general pattern mm -hmm. of progression, and the other dementias have their own set of patterns of how they progress, but they all end up in the same one at the end as Alzheimer's do. So let's talk about some of these symptoms or some of the signs that we should look out for that will help us realize that this is a possibility of what's on the onset. Okay, well we do have a warning signs which are probably all over the place, but let me um, talk about some of what I see here on the islands specifically, which I find, um, which is usually the arguing going on and trying to say, well, mommy, what are you doing? That's that You haven't been doing that for... Why are you doing it like that? You know it's not like that. Or at work, work setting, someone who's been proficient or doing things a certain way, then all of a sudden they're making, mis not sudden, but they progressively start making um, mistakes. And so then they create um, enemies in a sense that people just stay away from them. People don't want to bother with them because they just find reasons to quarrel. And really it's just their brain trying to interpret what's going on and they're not recognizing themselves at the time. About half of them recognize it, the other half are scared of it and try to cover it. So that's what I see a lot as far as the earlier signs going on um, in here here in St. Lucia anyways. Anything that you follow with heart healthy usually will help um, reduce the symptoms of the brain as well. So other things is brain training, memory training, all of these things can help um, reduce it. Um, eating healthy and also reducing your stress dramatically helps if you have chronic stress. Now there's healthy stress and there's chronic stress. Right. So you really want to get rid of that chronic stress and there's ways to do that. I mean really you have to just change the way you think about the situation. So, But stress is a huge thing that contributes to any kind of illness.
Yeah, there's a lot of stress here, the unspoken stress. We do try to swallow it and just, you know, be prideful in some senses or just try to cover because we don't want to like if it's a job we don't want to lose our job oh yeah we got it we're, we're fine or you know it's just the way it is and I just gotta do deal with it without any um realizing that how stressful you are your body it shows in our bodies a lot too of how stressed we are. I've always been fascinated with how people think and process information. Mm -hmm. So I started working in psych as a um, health aide years ago and then um, became a nurse after that and specialized in um, psychiatric nursing. Mm -hmm and then did that for about 10 years and then went over to another state where they didn't have a good um, mental health program, but they had a lot of Alzheimer's and dementia there. And so that really, and what happened was the, the treatment for mental health patients as opposed to dementia patients was completely different. It just blew me away. It was more humane. It was more treating the person just like you and I and not just going about who they are as a human being. It was a real eye-opener for me, and that's just where I just wanted to stay. So our main goal is to try to help as many people with the condition and the people who are taking care of them, whether that be families or professional carers or family carers. So we just want to help all of them together, and there's different things that we do. If you reach out to us, you can let us know what kind of support that you need. So we do things like social the social part of it people are isolated in this including the families that are taking care of them they're very isolated and they they and social skills not skills but social activity is real important to help maintain the memory as well and to keep it going and alive and stimulated and that's one thing with people with alzheimer's and the people who take care of them they they are deficient in that because they're so focused on the care part of it and we just want to help them get off of that. So also you can reach us at on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. We also have a Facebook support group, which is private, So, but you can link onto it. And then we ha our phone number is 486-4509. And then our email is brainhealth, S-L-A-T-H, not T-H, S, brainhealth, S-L-T, <laughs> um, at gmail.com. <laughs> So super. So this morning, hopefully everybody paid close attention, and I hope it resonates with some of us as well. Um, you know, recently, like, well, I shouldn't say even last month, but you know, we recently looked at World Mental Health Day and all of these things. So I think it directly ties in with what's happening here, and hopefully some of us are more knowledgeable now. So let's take the step that we need, so for ourselves, for our friends, for our loved ones, to try to help prevent it, and of course, being a little bit more understanding. Hopefully, we can provide more support. And now you know the association is here. So. For Feel free to reach out for more information, for advice, you know, if you need that help and support too. So thank you so much for what you and the team are doing, Regina. And honestly, I can only imagine just the tip of the iceberg, you know, but it's a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of energy. So I feel like this thing is a community issue yeah. anyways, so we need to be in it together. Yes, yes, it's not just a one person or one family. It's a community. We try to help the public, businesses, they're all affected by it. Definitely. Yeah. So on that note, we'll leave you with something positive. Let's take care of each other and we're going to do it together. Yay. Right? <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
I'm Maya. And I'm Darius. And we have to talk about something. It's bullying. When people think of bullying, they think of kids getting shoved into lockers or having their heads flushed in a toilet. But the truth is, bullying can be a lot more complicated than that. Bullies use their power to hurt or control others. And they might make you feel unsafe in places where you should feel protected. And that's not okay. Your school, sports teams, and after-school clubs have to be safe spaces for everyone. There was a time when I didn't feel welcome at school. Some girls that I thought were my friends had decided I wasn't cool enough for them. Everywhere I went, they either laughed at me, made fun of me, or ignored me altogether. I didn't know what to do. Yeah, there was a time when I didn't feel safe at school. I started to dread coming to football practice because one of my teammates would always take the drills too far. It didn't seem like anyone noticed. I mean, the coach was too busy focusing on the whole team to see me being bullied. No one ever has the right to hurt you or make you feel unsafe. The problem is, bullying is hard to stop. And that's because most people's first reaction to bullying is to ignore it. You may feel like it will go away, but the problem with ignoring it is that it won't stop, and it might even get worse. Maybe you're embarrassed, or you want to believe that it's not a big deal. Or maybe you're afraid that telling will make it worse, or that whoever you need to tell won't understand or be able to help. But trust us, because we've been there. If you're being bullied, there's only one way to deal with it. Stop, walk away, and tell an adult. Stop taking the abuse. Get yourself away from the situation. And go talk to an adult you trust. Tell them everything. Parents, teachers, counselors, and coaches' first priority is your safety. Believe me, there are adults that want to help you. Bullies might scare you out of telling, but if you tell an adult, the bullying is more likely to stop. The adults in our lives won't tolerate bullying, but we can't tolerate it either. We have to stand up for each other, and we all know, some kids get it the worst. Last year, a friend of ours started feeling unwelcome and unsafe at school. He was being bullied for weeks just for being different and having different interests than some of the other kids at school. We didn't want to see our friend get hurt or feel like he didn't belong. So we helped do something about it. Kids who are LGBTQ or who are of color or maybe have learning challenges or physical differences might get bullied the most. We need to work together to decide how safe our school can be. Our differences are our strengths. We also know that bullies need help, too. But we can't tolerate their behavior. Never ignore bullying. Never stay silent. You will help yourself and help your bully more by speaking up. Stop, walk away, and tell an adult. Even if the bullying happens online or on your phone, speak up whenever you see, hear about, or experience bullying. Do it for yourself. For your friends, for the kids you've never even met, always speak up. It's time we work together to make our schools safer for everyone. Welcome to part two of our Neuro Movement Wellness Series. Neuro Movement is an opportunity to discover the amazing powers of the brain for healing and restoration. Neuro Movement helps you relieve stress, get rid of aches and pains, and improve overall wellness and improve vitality. Welcome to lesson two of our Neuro Movement Wellness Series. 
so I will be reminding you today to go slow go gentle and to pay attention to what it is that you're feeling as we're going through the lesson so now slowly and gently we'll be in standing today I will stand with your feet parallel to each other and then I will ask you to gently come up onto your toes and just feel what it feels like to come up onto your toes and back down so you do the movement and pay attention to what you feel so it's almost like learning about balance in this lesson and now I'll ask you to do the movement a little faster So just feel what's happening in your spine as you do the movement and go a little bit faster again. So just plop, plop, plop. And now as you're doing the movement, just take the head back a little and just feel how the movement feels now for you and stop. So just notice what you felt and now allow the head to elongate so bring the head back to the center or to the neutral point and just allow the head to elongate forward as you do the movement and just feel the difference from doing it with the head back and then doing it with the head now forward so does the movement feel easier does it feel lighter And now, so just notice what it feels like for you. And now stop the movement. And we are going to just collapse the right knee. So your right heel comes off the floor. So you lean in now on your left leg. And slowly and gently lift and lower the right knee. So pay attention, you can actually put the foot down all the way down and then do the movement again so you can always just adjust your balance so you don't need to try to stay up but you gently bring up the right leg and lower the right leg so just feel what is moving in your pelvis in your spine as you do the movement so just pay attention to the feeling and remember to breathe as you're doing this movement so you can inhale and exhale because a lot of times it's very easy to just hold the breath so allow yourself to breathe and then gently slowly stop the movement so then you're just gonna stand on both both feet and just feel what it feels like for you now so standing on your right and your left leg and now gently we'll begin shifting the weight to the right and we're gonna collapse the left knee and gently lift and lower the left knee and again just go slowly and gently so pay attention to the movement and of course you will observe that one side is different than the other so in Anthony you can see that now coming onto the right leg is a little more challenging and that's totally fine because again we stand differently and we use our body differently on our right side and on our left side so now what it means is that you just go a little slower so you don't do too much but just allow yourself to be at ease when you're doing the movement so a little slower and come up less so again it's just knowing how your body works for you so you don't need to do too much just a small movement so again just do a small movement don't come all the way up and slowly back down so do less this time very good and back down and gently stop the movement and again just observe how you feel now leaning on both the right and the left leg 
How does it feel? Does it even out? You feel taller. <laughs> you feel it in your spine. Very nice. So thank you all for participating in lesson two. And thank you, St. Lucia. And this is where I say goodbye for today. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Yes, because it's going to be another great day. We're going to speak it into existence. We're going to keep it positive, And we look forward to sharing all this energy with you. Remember, if you need a top up, then of course you can watch any episode at your convenience. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is DBS Morning Show. Very simple, very easy. Follow us on Instagram at DBS758. And of course, spread the word, spread the news that we are here. And tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., we will be back at it again. So I look forward to seeing you then.